To our guests this morning, I'm Mike Gillen, pastor here at Cornerstone United Methodist Church. It's great to be able to worship with you this morning. This is the beginning of a message series for the month of November titled Decision 2018. And uh, before I get into the details of the message series, I just want to say as a matter of personal privilege that it's a special day uh, for me because the church I served in Richmond, Virginia for 11 years, the name of the church is West Hunt Baptist Church. I used to be Baptist. And that church today is celebrating its 50th anniversary. And while I can't be there with them, physically I'm there with them in spirit, grateful for the ministry God has worked in that church and the way that it was a ministry to me in those 11 years of ministry. Both my kids were born there. My wife and I were uh, growing up in our relationship as a married couple together. And so for us, that church, West Ham Baptist Church, is really close and special to us. And so I wish for them a great celebration today. And, and just to let you know, trying to remind myself as we move along that I'm at Cornerstone so I need to say Cornerstone out loud, not West Hunt, because you'll look at me and think, where is West Hunt? It's a, a suburban church in Richmond, Virginia, far from here, but close to my heart today. Well, in any case, Decision 2018, the idea behind the message series is that in the middle of the political environment we find ourselves in now, the reality is that every day God is reaching out to you and me and calling us to a decision to follow Christ and live faithfully towards God by serving God, following Christ, and living in the Spirit of God. And every day, God is fighting for our hearts and our minds to encourage us and lead us and welcome us into an eternal kingdom that changes us for the better every day. So this month, we'll talk about how each day we're called to a decision of saying yes to God and following after Christ and allowing the Spirit of God to live in and through us. As I think about that, though, and this in political environment, I wonder if you can help me because we want to take a poll and I think this is the appropriate time because you probably had phone calls and emails about polls you could take. So here we're conducting a poll day. If you had the choice, you let me do this. Would you rather, A, see more political ads on TV? No. B, receive more political ads through social media? My kids are telling me, we're tired of seeing this on our, well, I don't know what to tell you. You can't even vote yet. C, maybe this, have more political candidates knock on your door. Would you like that? Because we've had several the enthusiasm has just, I mean, the, it's evaporated from the room. It's amazing how quickly we've gone from excitement to, uh. how about D? Maybe you're with me on this one. Take a two-year vacation before the next election cycle begins. I think that's, yeah, 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 all right. My suggestion, first service is that we all decide to climb on some planes to Puerto Rico tomorrow, uh, Wednesday after we vote, and we spend two years in Puerto Rico helping our Puerto Rican friends who are also citizens of the United States, many of them Methodists, by the way, helping them in the recovery efforts they're still going through, and maybe at least for a while, we wouldn't be found by the political cycle that's going to start on Wednesday, by the way, for the next political year. Boy, I'm tired of politics stuff, aren't you? One guy walked up to me after the service, in first service, and said, I love politics. I could talk about it all day. I said, well, you're going to be right here by yourself for the next <laughs> long time. So the politicians, they want our loyalty, don't they? They want us to say yes to them and to elect them to a position of power. And they're trying to grab our attention. Let me tell you this, there is a God who is looking for you today. I don't know where you've been in the last week or last month, the last two months, what it's been like for you to, to think about how you can participate as a citizen of this country, but there is a God who has an eternal commonwealth who is seeking you out today, wanting you to be part of something that helps you make a difference not only in your life and in your family's life, but in the life of others in this community and in the world that is eternal. And so this morning, I want to bring to you this idea that God wants your loyalty, and it's every day God is looking for you to say yes. With, with that in mind, first idea this morning is this, that God asks for our loyalty, which calls for our wholehearted commitment to God and full support of God's gracious and loving causes. Every day when you wake up in the morning, whether you know it or not, God whispers to your mind and to your heart to say yes to God. Every day, God is looking for your loyalty, that in every way you possibly can, you will say, God, yes, I will give my entire self over to you and support everything you're doing. The truth is, before you know it, God is already working in your life, graciously reaching out to you, encouraging you to be part of something bigger than yourself, offering to, to you a love that you can offer to others too. God wants your loyalty this morning. The scriptures speak to us about it, in fact. Again, Ephesians 4 says, you have one master when you say yes to God. 
Maybe this morning you're still thinking about whether or not this whole church stuff or Jesus stuff is worth it. And I, I get it. There's a lot of different things we can give our life to. The scripture calls us to recognize that we are created to have only one master, the God of all who is. And with that one faith, that one baptism, we commit ourselves to God who rules over everything, works all over the place, and is present with you all the time. If nothing else, I hope this week you're thinking about every day as you begin your day and every day as you end your day, you think about everything that you did was in the presence of God. In some way or other, everything you did was in response to God. Were you loyal to God's causes? The scripture goes on to say, I want you to get out there and walk. This is the apostle Paul writing to church folks, trying to explain to church folks what it looks like to be the church because they were the first, the first generation of Christians. He says, get out there while I'm in prison. He was in prison for preaching. Christian faith, and he says, while I'm in prison, I want you to get out there in the, ro- in the world, I want you to walk. No, don't walk, I want you to run. Run down the path God has given for you. Find that road and travel it with God. And do it together, not by yourselves, with other Christians, hand in hand. Don't let folks stroll off to a path that goes nowhere. I love that translation, that's from the message translation of this, of this scripture. Have you ever done that before? Joined hand in hand with a few fellow Christians and realized, wow, we just went nowhere. That was great. Weeks of my life gone or longer. This is who we're called to be. Folks who give ourselves to a loyalty and hang in there with each other. God wants your loyalty today. Second idea is that loyalty to God requires us to commit in faith to Jesus Christ. We choose Christ's way. We pattern our lives after his life, and we follow his teachings to take up residence in our hearts. A little bit later in the service, we'll have communion together, and we'll use a a liturgy that's ancient. A liturgy is just a way of talking about how to worship. And in it, in those words we'll say together, it describes how Jesus Christ sacrifices himself for you and me, and God works a miraculous, wonderful thing that we sang about just a moment ago with a kind of power that's unbelievable, bringing Jesus up from death. And we're supposed to pattern our lives after that sacrifice. When we receive Holy Communion, part of the, the intent of the, of the worship time is for us to experience Christ's presence calling us to live a life of sacrifice, to give ourselves over, committing again and again and again to saying yes to Jesus Christ. Maybe you've never, never ever said to anyone else that you believe in Jesus Christ. Don't go another week. Contact me. Talk to someone that you know here and say, I I need to say yes to God. And commit my life to Christ. But if you've done that, if you've gone through confirmation or you've walked down the aisle and said a prayer or you've, you've stood before a church and been baptized and you've made a commitment to Christ, understand that's the start, not the end. Because every day of our lives, God expects us to say yes again. God reaches out to us and says, commit yourself again to the causes of Christ. Third idea is this, and this is just reality. We all struggle with divided loyalties, often allowing competing causes to stake a claim on our hearts. Christ's way introduces us to a lifelong process of giving our hearts completely over to God, which takes precedent over every other type of loyalty. I mean, there's a lot in this world, isn't there, trying to get our attention, right? I was talking to a five-year-old just a few minutes ago. Her birthday was yesterday. Do you know what has grabbed all of her attention? Yesterday's presence. And the fact that she is a big girl now, big five. At every stage of our life, there's something to grab our attention and give our hearts to. Divided loyalties are just a part of life. 
I grew up in Kansas City. Some of you know this. I grew up watching the Kansas City Royals and loving them. As the Lord worked in my life, I was brought to love a South City St. Louis girl. Just couldn't help myself. She was just so cute. <laughs> she loves the Cardinals. When we moved back here in 2009, she made it clear that our household would not be a divided household. <laughs> a couple years ago, so two years ago, the Cardinals are in Kansas City playing the Royals. And it broke my heart as I watched the Cardinals lose two out of three games to the Royals, I was shocked to find out that I was sad the Cardinals had lost. You understand what I'm saying? Royals won two out of three. Miracle in itself. I guess, and I was sad. And I realized that cute girl had infiltrated my heart. <laughs> and now I was a Cardinals fan through and through. Divided loyalties. We know what they look like. Divided loyalties look like this. There are households divided. <laughs> if you look real close, I think the guy's got like black eyes. I think in the middle of the night, his wife was like hit him with a Cardinals bat that said, come on, be a Cardinals fan. Think about all the things that demand your loyalty, that tug at your heartstrings. I remember so many times folks saying to me, I would do this ex for God except... There's this, or there's that. It's so easy for us to commit ourselves to lesser causes than the causes of Christ. The scripture for this morning calls us to a unified loyalty around God and God's work through Jesus Christ. Working in the church to say, church, work together. Avoid the disharmony. Hang with each other when you frustrate each other. Understand that God is working for something greater than you can see. There are times when it's tough to stay loyal to God. But God never gives up on us. And we can tell that we're growing in this process of faith by what we experience in our hearts and in our minds and how we act. The scripture for this morning actually gives us a litmus test. Next idea is this, that our attitudes and actions will reflect our loyalty to God as we grow in grace. You and I can actually tell. How are we doing, right? I mean, there are other things in life that help us measure how we're doing, right? Um, teenagers go to school and get grades, and those grades say something to parents about how well the kids are doing in that progression? What about adults? Adults, do we have, as, as Christians, do we have a kind of way of determining where we are? The scripture for this morning says that when our attitudes and actions reflect loyalty to God, we are growing in grace. And we know it because we'll see these things happening in us. Attitudes of the Christian heart. The scripture says our humility, the willingness to be humble, we have seen too many political ads, haven't we? I hope none of you are candidates that have been running political ads, and I'm, a, I'm offending you right now. If I am, I, I apologize. But I hope that you'll stop running your ads soon. <laughs> you know, humility in our political system is, is actually, an, appears to be a negative thing. It appears that you, it's impossible to be an American politician and have humility. There has to be this kind of assertion that I am better than you, if you know what I mean. There is this assertion that, listen, if I'm really your candidate, you have to know I've got the answers and the other person doesn't. Humility, a Christian attitude of a humble heart, is exactly the opposite. It says, I will serve you and God and give of myself for you and humble myself. That leads us to a kind of gentleness where we are more gentle than we are harming so many of us have rough edges, and when we're called into the community of God's grace and eternal faith, sometimes we're less gentle than we should be. That leads us to realize we need to be patient with each other, and patient that God's timing will eventually work everything out for good. It 
leads us, to these attitudes of the Christian art, lead us to realize we aren't called to faith by ourselves, but called to be with other people, committed to other Christians, in a, a church family, a community of faith, uh, an active, growing, committed group of folks aiming for God's good. And in order for that community of grace to hang together, we have to be unified. It doesn't mean we're all exactly the same. We can have Democrats and Republicans sitting shoulder to shoulder in worship. Sometimes you're even married to each other. We can have folks who are independents and libertarians and Green Party and we can even have Cubs fans in this church. <laughs> we are called to a unity that reminds us that we are part of an eternal commonwealth that supersedes loyalties to political parties or sports teams or whatever else would divide us from God. And that leads us to hearts that are filled more and more with peace. I heard someone in another church, I have a friend that goes to a different church and we were talking about some things and the person said to me, listen, we are taught to hate the sin and love the sinner. And I said to him, you know, I have never experienced a single time in my life when I allow hate to enter my heart that it doesn't interfere with how I relate to someone else. As we are growing in a, a Christ-like way and our hearts are being given over to God in loyalty to Christ's ways, peace transcends hatred for us. How are you doing with this checklist? Where are you in this eternal process of growing in grace? How loyal do you find yourself being toward God if you look at these attitudes and how you live out these attitudes? Fifth idea this morning is this. <laughs> that sounds not good. <laughs> Fortunately, I have the notes, so <laughs> we'll be okay. I'll give them just a second to see if this pops up on the screen. If you've got your bulletin with you, you'll see that the fifth idea is this, that through the church, again, that, that blank line is through the church, we begin to understand that a faith-filled loyalty to God binds us together with a community of believers on earth and in heaven. Thank you, Mike. So the church, we get connected to eternity. Now, it's not just through the church. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the, it's the testimony of the scriptures. It's the encounter with other believers. But when we are living together in a community of faith, in a church family, we begin to nurture a faith-filled loyalty to God that binds us with a heavenly witness even as we're bound together with believers from all different walks of life and all different varieties of being Christian here in this world. If you want to grow in your faith, if you want to make a decision in 2018 to grow in loyalty towards God, here's some suggestions I have for you that I think will get us all moving in the right direction. If, let's see if this, there we go, all right. How can Cornerstone grow your loyalty to God? Now, I'm, I'm the pastor at Cornerstone. I'm sure there are lots of other good churches. Maybe some of you came just to worship one Sunday here and you're gonna try another church. Great, great. Wherever you go, I'd love for you to be here, but wherever you go, ask this question. How can you grow in your loyalty to God through the participation in the community of faith in which you call your home? First, receive Holy Communion. In just a little while, we'll offer it to everyone who wishes to receive it. Young people, people with a lot of experience in life and everybody in between, the newest person to Cornerstone who's never been to church before and the person who's been in Cornerstone their whole life, everyone is welcome to Holy Communion in just a little bit. And in receiving Holy Communion, you will encounter the grace of God if you open yourself up to it. How can that alone change your loyalties and lead you to God? Worshiping and praying with others at Cornerstone will assist you in being in a place where God's grace can invade your heart. I'd encourage you to join a small group or start one. 
and get connected to folks in ways that help you to live life together with them and study the scripture and pray and serve together with them. Find out how you can take part in a ministry that serves others. Last week I used, if you weren't here last week, I used the, the old uh, guilt pastor trick and talked about how, you know, if you really want to say yes to God, you have to know that you need to serve others, and we have some ways to do that. We talked about the um, Boy Scout food drive that's happening in a couple weeks. And a lot of folks signed up for it. I also talked about how we have a, a hospitality ministry with coffee and donuts, and we need more volunteers, and a lot of folks signed up for that. You can, by the way, sign up for those ministries, and you're just committing yourself to either one day for an hour or two here to help us sort canned foods, or you commit to an hour out of the year to help us with a coffee ministry. And in fact, we'll train you how to do that so that the day you show up, you'll know what you're doing. Maybe you just need to try a ministry first, just a, a one-time event, and see how it affects you for the better and makes you a little more willing to say yes to God. Maybe you need to do something more, though. Maybe you need to find out how to take a next step of commitment here at this church. Speak to me. Talk to me after the service, call me this week, email me, set up a time to come by the office, let me pray with you and talk with you about what you can do next. I'm amazed at how folks will come up to, to me and say, I have never been baptized and it's time. Or my kid is three years old and it's time to baptize her or him. Or I've been looking for a church and I think I found it, what do I do next? Or something really simple like, I don't know how to pray and I need to learn it. What's your next step in a community of faith, a church family that will help you grow in loyalty to God? I can tell you this, in the next week, there are going to be opportunities for you to say yes to God. It will be a time where you'll get a chance to pray for someone else, maybe offer them some kind of care and support. Maybe you'll wake up on Tuesday and say, I've got to help with that adopted family program, and I forgot to put that uh, form where I needed to put it. And you'll have to call the church at two o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday afternoon. And we'll get you connected to it. But there's gonna be a time this week where God will invite you, challenge you, to a greater sense of loyalty, and you'll have to make a decision for God. My prayer for you and for me is that we will be loyal to the only God that is, by serving God, following Christ, and living in the Holy Spirit. Will you pray with me? God, this morning, help us to say yes to you and to be as loyal as we can to your work, to your causes, and to our Savior. In Christ's name, amen.